All right, everyone, welcome back to a show that we like to call The News Wrap. As protests continue all across the United States of America, one has become a living embodiment of what some in the movement dream of, a place without police. The Capitol Hill occupied protest known as CHOP now, originally called the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, or CHAZ, has existed in Seattle for close to a week as a place devoid of police and law enforcement and full of what some call the atmosphere of a commune, a commune, excuse me, or a campus co-op housing. The mayor and plenty of others, mostly Democrats, support the zone's efforts, but there are lots and lots of opponents. Our next guest is one such opponent. Caleb Heimlich is the chairman of the Washington State Republican Party. Good enough to take the time to join us now. Uh, Caleb, I appreciate you taking a few minutes and making your debut with us here on The Wrap. Uh, give us your perspective. We've heard a lot from the city's mayor and other leading Democrats, but give us your take. How disruptive do you think this has been to the city of Seattle as things stand today? Yeah, thanks for having me, J.D. And I think you can take what Chief of Police Carmen Best has said and she's kind of put it best. Police response times in surrounding areas of Seattle to emergencies have tripled. They've gone from five minutes to over 15 minutes when you're responding to a home intruder or other violent calls, 15 minutes is a lifetime. And so this protest has occupied this East Precinct for exactly a week, it was Monday of last week, and that has been a disservice to the residents and the businesses of surrounding areas. Just last night, an individual broke into an auto repair shop just outside the protest zone, outside of CHOP. Uh, they broke in, they stole money, stole keys. It was a mechanic, so they were stealing car keys for the cars that were there. And the owner called 911 and police and fire were unable to respond. He had to go to his business, he had to put out the fire himself. Uh, he and his sons actually detained one of the people that broke in but it's just a chaotic situation. And I think a lot of the message of the protest is being completely lost and overrun by this anarcho occupation. Okay, well, you call anarcho occupation, other people call social change activism. Yes, look, there's always gonna be bad actors. There will always be opportunists. But by and large here, Caleb, with all due respect, a lot of the images that we have seen are that of a peaceful commune. Uh, some people on Twitter have noted, without law enforcement, the zone has turned into a peaceful George Floyd memorial filled with art, positivity, love. Many are alleging it's the law enforcement apparatus that has really been the instigators in much of the community. How do you respond to those who say, hey, by and large, it is peaceful and people are there in good faith? I think a lot of people are there in good faith, and that may be the case by and large. It does feel like a commune or a carnival or a street festival. But I was actually there on Thursday. We posted the video on our Twitter online, and about a dozen law enforcement officers attempted to walk past the barricade, just walk. They were certainly not instigating violence, and about 100 protesters charged them, picked up the barricades, picked up the fencing, and forcibly removed the law enforcement officers from a sidewalk. So to pretend that this is entirely 100% peaceful and just about the, the carnival and the drugs and the art uh, is really ignoring the underlying issue. The chief of police has said they need to be able to operate out of that precinct. I think you could have a coexistence of the protest, of the memorial with the police, but you don't, I mean, the, right now you have protesters occupying a police precinct. That is there to serve the community and them not allowing the police to serve the community from that location is a disservice to the residents and the businesses there. So what's the solution? We've heard from President Donald Trump say, take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. What should officials on the ground do? What's the role of the federal government? Well, I think first and foremost, it comes back to the mayor and the governor. The mayor needs to reestablish some semblance of law and order there. For her, employees are even saying that. The chief, the fire chief, has said there are issues with the barricades and what that means for fire service. And the police chief has said the same, that we need to have law enforcement officers operating out of there. So I know that the fire chief was actually in the zone yesterday, meeting with business owners, meeting with protesters. Uh, some of those stories came out on a Capitol Hill blog. Um, one was, look, a, a person that manages a property manager said a week ago, I had 10 people move out of my apartment building because they didn't want to live here anymore. And so this situation as it exists is not sustainable and untenable to the people that own property, operate businesses, and again, not only live in the zone of the protest, 
to live outside the zone. So really it's incumbent upon Mayor Durkin and Governor Jay Inslee uh, to reestablish law and order. Absolutely, there needs mm -hmm. to be reforms. I think that, that nationwide conversation is happening, but it's up to the mayor and the governor uh, to establish some law and order first, and then we can implement those reforms as we go. And I, my final note would be there have been efforts to replicate this. We saw in Portland, they tried sure. to set up their own autonomous zone. Nashville, they yep. tried to do the same. Yeah. And so I think it's incumbent on city leadership, state leadership, to solve the problem so yep. there's not the need for a federal intervention. Caleb, I, I, gotta hop, I gotta hop in. That's Caleb Heimlich with the GOP party in Washington. You're always welcome back to make the case. We'll continue the conversation. Thanks a lot, Caleb.